Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of 1998 Represent. On this episode we're taking a look at Belly. So this is a um, a film, like a crime drama I guess would be probably how you would uh, categorize it. Uh, I've got some notes here and we're just going to discuss the film and um, discuss like um, what I thought of it and stuff like that. So let's Go quick, grab our notes here for this movie. So this is Belly. Uh, first released November 4th, 1998. Um, it's the, I think, feature film debut for director um, Hype Williams, who I think up to that point was known primarily for directing music videos. Um, and I think this might be the only film he's directed because I think during my research for this, he was um, working on other projects that all kind of just um, got st got kind of died of development. They never actually came to fruition. So from, from what I was reading, I, th I think this is his only his only film. Um, basically, um, it's got uh, it's got a huge cast. It has like Nas, DMX, uh, T-Boz, Method Man, um, just a ton of uh, people in like the music industry um, in this film. And Hype Williams coming to this film from a music video background, a lot of the stuff in the movie, like various shot compositions, transitions, and just kind of like the way the movie is styled, feels very much like it comes out of a a music video. There's a lot of cool kind of just music video style like elements uh, throughout the movie. Like there's scenes where like you have like stuff that's like overlaid on top of each other. Like um, like it's like some of the image. It's like I don't want to say double exposure. But it's uh, various like it, elements that are layered on top of each other, somewhat transparent. As like there's like a plane landing, you see people talking, and it's um, it's all very kind of stylized in that way. It's a very interesting movie uh, visually. Um, so we have various um, we've talked about the kind of music video elements of the film. Um, I first saw this film earlier in the year. I want to say I saw it in February. I had known about the movie for a while, and the I remember seeing the poster, so I like I could describe the poster. Somebody was asking me about it, but I saw the film um, at a local theater uh, back in February. We were doing something for Black History Month, where it was, um, you know, uh, Black History Month movies with really good soundtracks. So uh, the first movie I saw in that series was New Jack City with Wesley Snipes. That was like a 1991 film. It had a lot of really good music in it. And then uh, the other movie I saw in that series, I didn't get to, I didn't get to go to all of them, but the other one that they showed that I was able to see was Belly. And I have since rewatched it. I ended up purchasing it on Amazon. Amazon Prime had it. I want to say it was on sale. It was like it was like seven or eight seven or eight dollars. So I uh, picked it up and watched it again a few days ago, and uh, still really enjoyed it. The plot is probably the weakest part of the movie is the plot. The plot is kind of all over the place. We'll get to the plot a little bit later in the video. But uh, what else do we have here? So um, the budget was only about $3 million. And I think it was like basically had like a $3 million budget, $3 million budget, and made about $9 million at the box office. Um, the opening scene, I think that was kind of the... Uh, I had seen the opening scene before on like various clips of it. And it's kind of this... Um, they're doing like like a hit at like a nightclub going in and it's like all kind of uh i think the like I, I think it's like a lot of black lights going on in there and a lot of various like colors like you definitely see that like their eyes are lit up in such a way so i don't know if that was like they were wearing like colored contacts when they were doing the scene or if it was just something that they did in post-production but again that kind of harkens back to the kind of just the cool music video or music video elements of the film. Um, that opening scene ate through a ton of the budget. There was also a bunch of uh, kind of production problems, like Hype Williams was dealing with um, kind of like getting the arguments with the producers. Apparently, a lot of the cast was showing up either like high or drunk or showing up late. Uh, so people showing up late. Uh, Jay Z was apparently also considered for the, the lead role in, this, in the film, and I think the lead role is Nas. Um, it's Nas and DMX for the two, the two leads. Even though, to, to me, it feels like DMX is more of the... His character 
is more of the driving element of the movie. Nas is kind of just there, and um, he works with DMX like in, like time to times. But basically, uh, DMX's character will do something, and then he'll need Nas to kind of bail him out, and then DMX's character will go back to doing something. And that DMX definitely drives the movie forward, in my opinion. He's kind of like the character that kind of moves the plot along in in, in a way. Uh, it wasn't very well received by critics. The critics kind of really heavily criticized the plot of the movie. And the, and the plot of the movie is definitely, like I said, its weakest point. Um, the movie, I think, kind of makes up for that with just the various, um, how stylish it is. I think DMX does a really good job. DMX has done, like, since this has done, you know, a bunch of other uh, acting roles. And I think he's very good at this. Um, it's um, A lot of it is kind of like his style anyway kind of like the way he portrays himself on his albums so it's not really a i don't think the character that he's playing is really that much of a stretch but he's definitely in my opinion the most entertaining part of the movie because he just kind of goes all in uh Nas is very good as well and there's a bunch of other characters i really like the character like method man has a kind of a small part in it as well and his character is really interesting as well uh but let's see so it wasn't super well received by critics um we're going to bring up the the soundtrack as well here. And the soundtrack to Belly actually has a really good soundtrack. So let's see what we have here. It's a pretty long soundtrack. It's about 18 tracks. And it, let's see what the length of the album is. I mean, an hour and 13 minutes. So let's just go through here. Uh, the track listing is uh, track one of the soundtrack is uh, No Way In, No Way Out. Um, that is... Performed by Lady. It's written by, uh, looks like R. Kelly. Track two is uh, Devil's Pie by D'Angelo. Track three is Grand Finale, which is uh, DMX, Ja Rule, Method Man, and Nas. Uh, track four is Never Dreamed you, um, you Leave in the Summer, which is performed by Jerome. Track five is What About by Sparky. Track six is Two Sides, which is by um, Hot Hot Tolly, or Tolly, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um... Seven, track 7 is Moving Out, which is Maya, Raekwon, and um, Noriega. Uh, track 8 is Top Shotter by DMX, Sean Paul, and Mr. Vegas. Sean Paul actually has a cameo in the movie as well. Uh, he's kind of just like, it's not like a speaking cameo, he's just kind of there. Um, let's see, track, that was track 8. So track 9 is Story to Tell by Ja Rule. Track 10 is Crew Love by uh, Jay-Z, uh, Betty Siegel, and Memphis, uh, Memphis Bleak. Track 11 is sometimes performed by uh, Noriega, and Ma Noriega and Mace. Track uh, 12 is uh, We We All Can Get It On, performed by, uh, look at, by, performed by Dragon. Uh, track 13 is, looks like, uh, Militia Remix, performed by Gangstar, Rakim, and WC. Track 14 is Windpipe by Rizza, Ghostface, Killer, and ODB. Track 15 is Pregame, which is by Sauce Money and Jay-Z. Uh, track 16 is Tommy's Theme. Which is made by uh, Made Men and Locks. Track 17 is Some Players, performed by um, Half a Mill. Not gonna say the full name of that track. And track 18 is I Want to Live by Bravehearts. So that's the soundtrack to the film. Um, really good soundtrack as well. Again, the whole movie kind of plays like a music video anyway. And now we're gonna move into the plot of the film. So, uh, plot of the film is the opening scene essentially takes place at, like, a nightclub. And it's a very stylish scene. Like, you, you see main characters go in and basically uh, shoot some people, take a bunch of money, and then they go back to, um, I think Buns is the character's name, by, uh, played by, uh, and Sincere is uh, Nas, and Buns, or Bundy, I believe, is or people just call him Buns, is perform or played by uh, DMX. They go back to where he's hanging, during like, they're counting money and stuff. And then um, DMX sees something... On the news about a new form of heroin um, coming from, I think, uh, from Europe to America, and DMX's character decides that he wants to get in on that and, like, basically, like, start like selling it. So he goes to, um, and like, and the, and the movie doesn't really show where, like, it doesn't particularly tell you where people are. So, like, he goes to talk to this uh, Jamaican kind of like kingpin character. And it doesn't show DMX travel there initially, so you don't know if it's in Jamaica or if it's in the United States. So some of the plot, the logic, and like the way the plot moves is kind of not very well like thought out. 
But he goes to this guy and he's like, hey, like, I want to, like, get in on this, uh, this new heroin. Like, you can, like, hook me up. And then um, they eventually get the heroin and they start distributing it in, um, in Omaha, Nebraska. And, um, like, so we're, we're distributing it. And I think um, there's a local, uh, the local kind of drug dealers there are not too keen on it. So they basically, like, report it to, like, um, they, they, they report it to the police and the police kind of raid it. And a guy who is also in charge of it gets put in jail. Um, and then um, DMX's character is still working with um, Ox is the uh, Jamaican Kingpin's character's name. And there's a scene where they're in Jamaica and there's like a rival drug dealer that he basically says, tells DMX to take out. And DMX kind of disguises himself as like just like a homeless guy on the street, like washing car windows. And he walks up to the, to, the wind, to the guy's car to wash it and just pulls the gun and like drops him. So there's that, and the whole thing is, um, it's basically a story of um, Sincere, which is Nas, and DMX's character is kind of growing apart. Uh, Nas in, uh, Nas's character is dating or going out with the character played by uh, T-Boss from TLC, and she's kind of telling him that, like, hey, we need to, like, slow down, you can't be, like, you know, hanging out with DMX all the time, and uh, doing all this dangerous stuff. And then um, DMX's character is kind of just still doing all this dangerous stuff he pulls um basically tells nas to help him out he's like hey like i'm in trouble i need your help this kind of stuff i got like i said the plot is very kind of very basic but also it doesn't flow very well but i definitely think the movie makes up for um what makes up what it lacks in plot it makes up for in in style and kind of like the way the movie, movie looks but um, they said, uh, basically, um, the character, another character that DMX is working for named Knowledge sends Method Man to, or Method Man's character, to Nebraska to see what's going on. And basically, he's there to take out the people that kind of uh, reported his operation. So um, Method Man's character takes him out. And then um, there's one really funny, or a couple funny scenes. One is there's a, this guy who's drinking a 40 on a couch. It gets in a fight with these guys at this like in the beginning of the movie where they're counting money, and DMX kind of lays the guy out. Uh, that guy shows up again later in the movie, like to deal, try to deal with uh, deal with Nas. But um, there's some, some the scenes. I don't know if they were intentionally funny, but they just came across as kind of funny to me. Um, another scene that happens is there's um, two people that DMX is working with. And they're at a restaurant, and like one of them is talking smack to the other, and DMX is like, "Ah, oh, man, you're gonna just sit here and let this guy talk smack to you." And they both uh, pull guns out at this restaurant and like put their guns on the table, and then one of them shoots the other one, and so the other one is basically just like gets shot at this table, and DMX's character just kind of sits there, like smoking, like smoking a smoking a blunt and drinking until the cops show up. It's just kind of an interesting scene. Like the guy's like, this guy shoots this guy, and then DMX's character ends up going to jail. Uh, DMX then eventually gets out of jail, and he gets approached by this guy. He's like, hey, we want you to kill this minister who is going to give a speech on New Year's Eve. Like, the whole movie takes place in 1999, uh, kind of, like, over the course of that year. And I think it's supposed to end with, like, the like New Year's Eve leading into the new millennium. And DMX's character is tasked with, like, like assassinating this guy. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, basically for DMX's character to infiltrate this, um, this it's like a, this minister's group, he's got to actually start, he's got he's got to, like, play the part, basically. So he starts to, like, start reading, starts reading, like, religious stuff. And he actually, the character kind of does get religious, and eventually, um, the, I, I think it's supposed to be some kind of government people that are trying to kill this guy, but, like, they don't really explain it very well. But uh, DMX's character goes in there to do the job to, to kill this guy and ends up not killing him. And uh, that's where the movie ends. So, like I said, the plot is kind of all over the place. But um, it's definitely it's definitely an interesting film. Like, if you just go in with the mindset of thinking you're going to be watching basically like an hour and a half long music video, it kind of works on that level. The plot itself isn't amazing it wasn't like i said it wasn't well received critically when it first came out but it's kind of has since then uh picked up a cult following so um i definitely really liked the performances especially from dmx um dmx's performance is really good nas is good too but i think dmx's character kind of 
DMX kind of steals the show in the movie, in my opinion. It's definitely my, the best part of the movie, at least for me. Um, one thing I wanted to watch, like, it was weird when I was watching it on Amazon, is I tried turning on the subtitles, and to turn them on, and the subtitles didn't initially start until about halfway through the movie. The reason I wanted the subtitles on was the character of Ox, or Lennox, is, they call him Ox, but, like, Lennox is the character's full name. He's the kind of the Jamaican kingpin that um, DMX is working with. His, um, he's played by, I forget the actor's name, but he's um, done a little bit of acting, but he's mostly a, or mostly was mostly, he's since passed away, unfortunately, but uh, mostly a, like, a reggae performer. So um, he's got a very thick Jamaican accent, so it's kind of hard to understand what he's saying at times. So I really wanted to watch it with subtitles, and like luckily, like the last half of the movie had the subtitles, but um, the subtitles, like I wasn't able to like really like fully understand what he was saying through this um, thick Jamaican accent of his. But uh, maybe it was just a bug with Amazon. I probably might go back again and watch it again in, in a little bit and see if those subtitles actually work. But uh, like I said, it, that character was just a little bit hard to understand at times. But overall, I really enjoyed the movie. Like I said, I've seen it twice now. Um, if you go, like I said, if you go in, go, don't go in for the plot. Just go in, um, kind of expecting like an hour and a half long music video. But uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, we'll be back again in a few days, probably doing another video game. Don't know exactly know what that's gonna be just yet. And then we have a few more episodes scheduled for this year, where we're, we're going to um, basically wrap up this series um, at the end of the year. And then next year we'll be transitioning the series into a just a general 1990s um, series covering the same kind of stuff, m movies, music, video games. It'll be the same format, but we'll be doing the, we'll still be covering some stuff from 1998 in that series as well. So it'll be basically the same series, but with um, a look at the entire decade. But that's going to do it for now. So remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you again next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care and have a good one. See ya.